Hey guys, check this out. I am officially now sponsored by Dubby. Dubby is a clean energy drink made to give you focus with no crash. If you guys are like me, you're always needing a burst of energy, especially with one with no crash. Dubby contains vitamins, amino acids, a nootropic, and 150 milligrams of caffeine. It keeps me awake with no jitters, guys. Check it out. Merch link is in the bio. Dubby. Why are you excited to be here tonight? Because I'm just excited. Yeah. No other explanation. Now, I do believe, tell me the truth. Is it uh, true that your dad has a ringside seat but didn't get you guys ringside seats? That is true, but it's because of this YouTube channel, okay? It's his YouTube, okay? Her dad's an influencer. Let him go, guys. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the pre-party, a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com, your number one source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. When I get around to updating it. Hey, uh, this is the pre-party. We come to you every Tuesday. Some call it the after party depending on how much you've already watched of nwa power but we're here every single tuesday to talk about the nwa don't you know and you know sometimes we talk about other wrestling promotions too but every tuesday that by god that is nwa tuesday as far as i'm concerned has been for like five years now and I enjoy talking to my friends here in the chat about the NWA. And I see a lot of my friends have been here. They've been here for a while. Mike Mike has been here for almost an hour. What's up, Mike? Uh, he's here to eat brisket and salad and, and watch some uh, pre-party. Awesome. Uh, my pal K-Fabe is here. You guys know him better as the Hebes. The Hebes. The Heebie-Jeebies. Uh, we got the great Hisa here. Uh, Jeremy's here. Um, let's see. Who else am I missing? Anybody? Noob is here. Noob is in the house. What's up, Noob? Sean Mega's in the house. What is up? Yeah, I. you know what? Sean Mega, man, you're coming through big time, bro. Hadn't seen you in a while, and now you're back in the mix, and I'm digging it. I appreciate it. So this is a big weekend, of course. A lot of wrestling is coming, of course, uh, in New Jersey. Not New Jersey. In Philadelphia this weekend emanates the granddaddy of them all, WrestleMania, and it's going to be a great time for the the people in Philly. You know, they're going to check out their, you know, the WWE, the NXT, the GCW, the T TJPW. There's all kinds of wrestling happening down there in Philly. And, uh, you know, but I, I'm looking forward to Philly for an entirely different reason. Like, I'm not going to Philly this weekend, guys. I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to drive to Philly or fly to Philly. I guess I wouldn't drive there either. But, uh, you know, Philly's not on my mind. Philly, uh, Philly this weekend isn't on my mind because Philly on my mind will be coming up in the summer. And that's August 31st. Don't you know at the 2300 Arena, South Swanson Street, baby, in Philly, it's official. Get Adam Pierce on the phone. It's official. The NWA will make its debut at the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia for their 76th anniversary show. And and, and it, you know all the main faces look like they'll be there of course already on the uh, advertisement, the advertisement if you will, Blunt Force Trauma, currently your NWA World Tag Team Champions, Maxim Paler, your television champion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Tom Latimer, uh, Murdoch's is on the on the poster. You got uh, Ruthie J, 
made the poster as well as uh, the NWA Women's World Champion uh, Kenzie Page and EC3, your World's Heavyweight Champion. Now that is a jacked, stacked, and hell of a lineup. I mean, it's not really a lineup yet, but uh, that's a very interesting uh, list of wrestlers who are going to be at the 2300. Again, affiliate isn't the same as any other wrestling town. And we've heard some pushback. Uh, you know, we've talked about it on and off. Would the NWA draw well in Philly? And I guess we're going to find out this summer. It looks like it's going to happen. Uh, and I, I'm really, really pumped up about it. I think this is going to be a big step forward for the NWA. This might be one of the bigger arenas that they've been in. Uh, you know, again, the history and tradition and the legacy of the 20. 20- 300 the old ecw arena you know that's where uh, so many ring of honor matches have happened game changer wrestling i believe combat zone wrestling uh it, it's been a hub for for mlw it's been a hub for pro wrestling for gosh probably close to 20 years and uh it's very exciting to see that the nwa is going to make their debut at the ecw arena uh of course there's a lot of ghosts Lingering in the background uh, when you talk about the ECW and the NWA, obviously the most, uh, the, the biggest uh, skeleton in the closet, it's no secret, Shane Douglas winning the 10 pounds of gold in a tournament that was promoted by the NWA and Eastern Championship Wrestling, where Shane Douglas would throw the title down and proclaim himself the ECW world champion, and the two organizations would have a break from there. Uh, Maybe the NWA will exercise some of those demons that weekend. And who knows? Maybe we'll see faces like Shane Douglas or, uh, gosh, uh, some of those, uh, you know, Philly based, Northeastern based wrestlers who uh, played a prominent role in the NWA early days, uh, not early days, but post WCW days. It'll be interesting to see what's going to happen there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jamming Music Man's here. Chris Drummond's here. Uh, Sean Mega says, I'm bored with the NWA. It's, I, I gotta be honest, man. It's, it's getting to be very hit or miss with episodes of the power. Now I have not watched power today. Uh, as always, I watch power after the pre-party and you guys are welcome to watch along with me on our discord server where we watched, we watch power um, immediately following the live stream. Uh, and it's always kind of fun because we'll have a couple of guys in there. Mike is usually in there and, and we'll, you know, we'll talk about the episode as it's happening. And last week's episode I thought was pretty good. I was, I wasn't disappointed. I thought it was a fun, uh, a fun hour of wrestling, but the week before I was not very content with, and that's the problem for the NWA is finding this consistency and the bigger issue now is that they're filming this stuff so far in advance that, like, if you want to look to see the results of uh, the um, the Hard Times signature live event, you can find that, which I feel kind of hurts the product because uh, I believe those signature live event, uh, well, the Hard Times, I believe, is going to roll out next week. I think that will be uh, next the next um season of power is going to be the rollout from hard times. And, you know, there was, there's a lot of questions going into hard times and a lot of all that's already happened. It happened in early March. So it's over a month ago. And, and, and the NWA is going into TV tapings uh, in just a few weeks here in the month of April. Then they have a lot of live events uh, with their partners like Exodus pro uh, NWA Chicago and Joe Kazana promotions. All these are happening in April and May. So there's a lot of stuff happening. So, uh, Chris, if you're getting bored, I do, uh, suggest checking out some of the other promotions associated with the NWA. You can see where some of these faces are coming from, but I do, I, I kind of feel you, man. It, it, it is, there's some stuff about it that I've been getting bored with as well. Um, Chris Drummond is here in full support of all elite wrestling and new Japan pro wrestling. Now, Chris, Chris is going to be in Philly, I think. I'm going to be in Philly. Are you going to be in Philly, brother? That's the question. Jamming Music Man's here. What's going on, Jamming? Uh, let's see. Have you heard any news of when we will get new episodes of Joe Kazana Promotions? Uh, no, Jamming. I don't know when we'll get new episodes. I know that they're doing some more uh, live events, and I believe they're following the NWA uh 
uh, blueprint, if you will. And I believe they're just taping their live events and putting them up on YouTube as their television show, which I think is a smart idea. I mean, it can be very costly going into a studio. You look at a company like Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and they're going to Thunder Studios or the Infinite uh, Infinite Reality Studios. They go there and they put on this great show. It's a wonderful show. Um, they do charge admission for these events. And, and then that that those shows end up being what is the Championship Wrestling from Hollywood uh, that you'll see on YouTube and in some other markets. Um, that can be very costly. The uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood group did a few shows recently uh, that were not televised that they did at a live event, um, which is cool. It gives you a different feeling, a different format, a different uh, style of wrestling almost. Um, but you don't really, uh, you know, that's like a one-time use. You know, the WWE uh, creates so much content throughout the, the month that their live events don't necessarily need to be taped for production, but a company like the NWA or the, you know, United Wrestling Network, they really benefit from doing, uh, filming everything really. And, and so, uh, again, going back to Joe Kazana Promotions, I don't know how it got so far off that. I do believe they're taping those live events for distribution on their YouTube channel. Um, solid NWA this week, hard times next week. There it is. There it is. So, uh, again, you know, and, and tonight I'm not overly enthusiastic about the show tonight. Uh, I know that that might be more of a my problem instead of your problem. But uh, I, I just feel like... Um, you know, this is one that I'm not super excited about, but I, I, I will be happy to be wrong. I will be happy to find a product that uh, is is enjoyable and fun and uh, it meets my viewing habits, uh, you know, pleasure. I, I just, right off the bat, when you mention Rolando, I'm a little uneasy as it is, right? I'm like, uh, hmm, not a big fan of Rolando. What, he, what we're going to get with him in the match. I'm not a real big fan of, uh, you know, mixing the little people with, uh, how do I say this with class, uh, mixing the, the different weight classes. We'll just say that, uh, Murnox are huge and, and, uh, you know, putting them with Eric Smalls. I just feel like it, it's, it's weird. I, I don't get it. I don't understand the uh, appeal of it, but, uh, I guess that's not for me to decide, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. <sighs> just checking it out and seeing what happens. And of course, you know, there's the, uh, the qualification. We'll get into all of power in just a few minutes. Of course. Um, Jeremy says, shame. Billy's too stupid to actually book the NWA in Philly during the mania weekend. Well, you know, Jeremy, part of that too is, um, that actually might be a smart idea not to book NWA in Philly this weekend, because there's so much interest in everything that it's going to be hard for some promotions to gain traction. And when the NWA, let's be honest, um, there is a huge groundswell of independent support during WrestleMania weekend because all these promotions, you know, specifically Game Changer Wrestling does like four events during during WrestleMania weekend, like Bloodsport and uh, Big Gay Effie's uh, uh, Brunch. I think, I don't even know. I don't know if they're still doing Joey Janela's spring break, but there's a lot of events happening connected to WrestleMania weekend. And there's only so many hours in a day, you know, you're putting NWA head to head against uh, maybe competition that it wouldn't be able to, to stand toe to toe with, you know, um, that's just at least my opinion. If they go to Philly and they're running alone, you know, uh, I think they're more likely to draw an audience, especially because Philly has not had an NWA uh, an event in the light new one era, you know, we haven't seen any NWA promotions running out there. So we'll kind of just have to wait to see how that all plans out. But uh, again, your boy Jay's going to be there. Big Chris dog's going to be there. I think Sam retro is going to be there. Dave Scooby's going to be there. You, you know, Dave Scooby was going to be there. Cheese steaks and chokeholds. I mean, yeah, man, I'm excited. Um, Jeremy, the NWA would have to partner with a fed if they, if they would like, yeah, and you know, there's nothing wrong with partner. Like again, if the NWA were to go out there and do in a co co promoted event, maybe with like Coastal Championship Wrestling or something along those lines, I don't, I wouldn't have had a problem with it. You know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but again, it's the NWA is not the focus of this weekend, and I think it's a wasted. Uh, 
I, I personally, if I was Billy Corgan, this isn't the weekend that I decide to promote uh, in Philly. And and for WrestleMania weekend, I definitely Philadelphia and the NWA and WrestleMania. I just don't feel that there's a good uh, equation there that works that makes sense. Now maybe in Florida, maybe in Texas, uh, maybe in another state where where wrestling is more sparse. But I, I feel like uh, for WrestleMania weekend in Philly or in Los Angeles, I would not bring the NWA to those two uh, territories for that. And Hama Ufa. What's up, Hama Ufa? Welcome to the show, man. I don't think I've seen you on before, so thanks for jumping in. Uh, appreciate you being here. Um, why would they have to partner with anyone, Chris? Well, they don't have to. It's not, it's not necessary, but uh, again... It's something I think they would have to do. Uh, Willie says, Jake, who's your choice for the NWA National Heavyweight Champion? Well, I mean, I, I kind of already know who won. And the person who wins was the person that I was what I rooted for anyways. So we got that going for us. Um, this is why WWE uh, premium premium live events are better than the NWA signature live events. Yeah, there's no, there's no, comp, there's no comparison. A signature live event gets recorded and then a month later gets distributed on the CW app which is not even available for everyone to watch. I mean, I would I would still gladly pay 20 to 40 dollars depending on the size of the event for live NWA wrestling as opposed to waiting a month outside of the event. Um Willie Bowen is not a WWE fan. K Fabe says Hair Me and Heat is the next show. Peep their post. I don't remember the date. Well, that's funny that you bring that up because I know the date. The date is going to be, oh, not on that post, uh, April 26th, where the country gentleman will be taking on uh, the Southern Six. And we also know, uh, like I just said, um, like I just said, we uh, or showed, we also have the NWA uh, JCP Southern Eastern Heavyweight Championship match between Jay Bradley and uh, Silas Mason. You know, that's going to that's going to bang. But we'll get to some more of those matches in just a minute. I do want to get to some more of your guys' comments before I, I go off. So let's see. Um, yeah, Fiona's here. Hello, Fiona. I am hoping to hook up with Fiona. Not not like that, guys. I'm I, no, that came out so wrong. That's Fiona. I apologize. It's not what I meant. I'm hoping to see Fiona when I go to Scotland in 2025. Uh, I'm bringing my whole family, even my wife, and we're and hopefully I get to go check out some Scottish wrestling. That would be some awesome. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> hello, even. Sorry about that, Fiona. Uh, Jammy Music Man, noob. I haven't seen any episodes of NWA Power on the CW app as of late because I was watching some Ohio Valley on YouTube. Not a bad uh, alternative. We watched uh, some Ohio Valley last week. It's not bad. Uh, production's a little. Not as good as the NWA on CW, but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's all right. Fiona said she caved and she got her VPN. She feels ashamed. You know, Fiona, I still think it sucks that you had to do it. I wish the NWA could have been more thoughtful, insightful about what was happening with the CW deal that somehow they could have brokered an international distribution deal. Uh, even if it was just on YouTube, I feel like that's a huge letdown. But I'm glad you did. I, 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 I'm very happy to see you back in catching up with the NWA. It's a weak card kind of bottom of the taping barrel. Smalls was fun. Okay. Uh, Heaps, you know, Heaps, I think a lot of our taste in wrestling are, are comparable. So I'm going to hold you to that. Lamb Sum is in the house. I Lamb, my brother, how you been, dude? Uh, what's happening? Uh, a lot of NWA action coming up, uh, and we're going to get to some of that in just a minute. Rolando Freeman is better off wrestling one of the seven dwarfs. I mean, it kind of does, right? Also, not every promotion can rent the same venues. Exactly. And that's a good explanation too, Fiona. There's a lot of events happening that weekend. It's hard to be special when everybody's running that same time. Understandable because most of the spotlight would be outside of WrestleMania on Ring of Honor, New Japan, and Game Changer. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Legos. I have Legos. 
Lamb, I have a TIE Fighter, a TIE Interceptor. No, not an Interceptor, a TIE Bomber, excuse me. And that's a, that's a Y-Wing up here. I've got my X-Wing right here. Yeah, I'm a big nerd. I love I love Star Wars and I love Legos. <laughs> BFT versus the Immortals. That would be a great uh, great matchup, Willie. I hope we see that. Noob says, will the NWA 76 be a two-night event or will it be a one-night event like the Crockett Cup this year? It seems like it's going to be a one-night event. I mean, you. I would think if the NWA is going to do a two-night deal, they would have to advertise it now because – if people who are coming out there like me for destination wrestling, if we're traveling out there and we make our plans and then they announce the second night, we're going to miss that second night. You know, I'm flying back on Sunday. What am I going to hang around uh, Philly on Sunday for? There's no wrestling. So if they are going to add an additional night, they should do it soon because they're going to miss out on a lot of the folks who are traveling out there. Maybe they will air hard times in two parts to catch up. I don't think they will. I don't think they will. I think it's going to be uh, just like they've been doing, which is, again, getting caught up isn't the answer. It's, I, I think that's by design. I think that's the formula that they've created is that they're going to do uh, a night of wrestling is uh, four weeks of TV. That's kind of what Championship Wrestling from Hollywood does. I think a lot of promotions that are running TV do that. They film a night of wrestling and get four weeks of TV out of it. He says, now that Thrill vacated the Natty, maybe the JCP belt will get elevated. That's a possibility. That's something a lot of us haven't really thought of. Uh, Easter Bunny got my son a Naboo Starfighter. It's sick. Awesome. One year for Christmas, I got the uh, the clone um, transport for my daughter. She was, she's 20 now. She was six at the time. And we built that thing. And I was so proud of it. It was so awesome. And then she proceeded to play with it for a little bit before dropping it, and it shattered into 100 pieces. We rebuilt it two more times after that, and now, sadly, it's in a box somewhere just waiting to be rebuilt. Uh, All In was as successful against WrestleMania. Yes, All In was very different, though, too, Willie. And, and again, uh, people don't acknowledge it, but you have to acknowledge that there was a lot of money behind the scenes from Tony Khan. Tony saw what they were doing and uh, he financed that pay-per-view guys. That was the genesis of all in uh, all elite wrestling. Um, anyways. So getting to some of the NWA events that we know that are coming up, obviously I keep talking about this just because Maxine and Taylor will be a part of WrestleMania weekend. We know Misa Kate is out there. Uh, her road to Misa, Misa mania or wrestle Misa or whatever it is. I know she's heading out there, uh, but we've got some uh, TV tapings happening on Saturday, April 13th, actually Friday, April 12th and Saturday, April 13th. So that's just about 10 days away in uh, Tampa where the, those will be live events that will lead up to um, the Crockett cup and the Crockett cup is set to take place again, uh, May the 18th in Forney, Texas. I would, I didn't have Forney on the map for where the NWA would uh, debut this year. Of course, uh, before that, though, we have the uh, Harriman Heat for Harriman High School with uh, Joe Kazana Promotions. Then we also have, um, coming up too, we have NWA uh, as it returns to Chicago on May the 3rd. And there's also going to be uh, some NWA action. I believe it's, I'm not sure what day it is. Uh, but NWA and Exodus Pro have another event that's lined up as well. Um, but but that all brings us to the Crockett or to the uh, 76, which is advertised for August 31st. And then the last event that's scheduled for this year looks to kill Saturday, December 14, 2024. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff building. Uh, I can't get this off the computer fast enough. There's a lot of stuff building, so stay tuned, I guess. There's a lot of wrestling happening. I see your guys' comments. I, I'm not forgetting about you guys. Uh, let's see. Um, so NWA 76 is not a pay-per-view. No, Lamb, all of the NWA action has now been converted to TV. So 
they will have their regular television tapings and then they have signature live events. This is the replacement for their pay-per-views, but the signature live events are not distributed as a pay-per-view, but rather more television tapings. So it, you kind of, uh, it kind of takes away from, you know, two months of TV and a pay-per-view, two months of TV and a pay-per-view. And now it's just TV, 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 TV. Now there, there's more uh, premium matches, you know, the signature uh, premium type matches for the pay-per-views. But all in all, it's just an extended TV taping schedule. Hopefully there's a lot of storylines and angles for NWA this summer. I mean, like, look, so if we look by comparison to last year, uh, the world was a vampire or is a vampire, however you want to look at it. The NWA had events in Mexico City in all over Australia. They had live events in Chicago, with Highland Park, and, you know, the HB Cares for Hooper. Um, there was a, a, a lot of things going on for the NWA uh, last summer. And they even had those live events as part of the World is a Vampire Tour in the U.S. They did the joint show with Boca Raton. And a lot of these things are not here now, right? There's a lot of... Uh, it doesn't look like they'll be doing any kind of touring in internationally. It doesn't look like they'll be going to Australia or Mexico again. Um, the Crockett Cup went from two nights to one night. Uh the 76th anniversary show looks like it's going to be a one night extravaganza. So all of these things are kind of changing the dynamic of how the NWA tours. Now they still have their television tapings. And again, they'll be doing those and that uh, the PBS arena in uh, PBS arena, the PBS studios in Tampa. Uh, but it's still just kind of interesting that, um, you know, the more they throw out there is great, but it, it's not the same as it was last year, which might've been the NWA's, most active year uh, since Billy Corgan bought the NWA. Uh, back to back TV tapings, good for them. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. Uh, again, like if they do back to back TV tapings, that's eight weeks of TV. That means that they've recorded two months of TV. And if they do that in April, that means that's your May TV and your June TV. Uh, and then that means that. Crockett Cup is probably airs on CW and like uh, around July. And so it just kind of pushes everything back. And I'm not saying that's an awful thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just the storylines. It's hard to be excited about what you're going to watch on the CW if it's already happened a month before or two months before. I saw an ad for an app that scans all your random Lego blocks and gives you instructions for random Lego sects. Hebes, send that to me because I've got boxes of Legos now from all my kids, and uh, that sounds fun. Willie Bone wants to see Freya the Slayer versus Maxine Paler. Freya the Slayer, right now, besides working with Ohio Valley, also is a regular for Joe Kazana Promotions. That match isn't as unbelievable as you would have, as it could have been maybe a year ago. How about that build to the cage match? Am I right? Yeah, I, I see. That's that's exactly it. And Lamb says, oh, Sam Adonis will be at NWA. Good for, the, good for them. Yeah, he'll be challenging EC3 for the 10 pounds of gold. But again, it's one of those things where where's the build? <laughs> where's the build to this match? And sure, like, you know, if they film that that match for the for the, the signature live event, I'm sure they, they could plug it up and, and do some promos before the event and all that stuff. But again, it's just why? What, why do it this way? I just feel like it's a flawed method. Why is Brian Idol nearly all of their posters? Does he play a big role in their show? Well, uh, Lamb, Brian Idol is basically the promoter for NWA Chicago. Uh, it, it's Billy's promotion. Billy's secondary promotion. It's, it's, it's his joint effort with Brian Idol, I guess. The you know best friends promoting wrestling together. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, where Joe Kazana is standalone Joe Kazana promotions. And we know that uh, EC3 standalone is running Exodus pro. They have mentioned more than once that uh, this is a partnership between uh, Billy Corgan and Brian idol uh, FTW wrestling. So it, it just, I don't know. It's, it, it seems kind of weird, but uh, it is what it is. So basically 
their signature live events is kind of like those TV specials United Wrestling Network does with the Red Carpet Rumble. Yeah, exactly. Or what NXT does, like Heat Wave, Great American Bash. Yeah, it, exactly. It. There's no there's no stopping point now for the NWA where we would get weeks of television that would lead to a pay per view, and it's kind of like after that pay per view, you'd have like almost like a reset. The pay per view would kind of reset the show, and then we'd go forward. Now there is no reset. Ooh, that W feels so good. One could argue that all these territory rollouts are filling up the NWA brain trust time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I think, like, look, um, Exodus Pro, EC3. Does he have a, a say in what's happening in the NWA as of late? Probably. Uh, he also has um, Aaron uh, Stevens helping out with his promotion as well is stevens involved with the storytelling and 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 booking for the nwa probably i mean not maybe not specifically booking but like crafting storylines i'm sure he has at least a say on what's happening in the nwa and and likewise joe kazana brings not just himself but also dr tom pritchard you know come on of course they're of, of course the brain trust is being built up for the NWA, but it's not like it was. There isn't like a board of directors. It isn't like one territory has control of a certain title that is still recognized as a, you know, board controlled title. Like there are no votes on who's going to be the uh, JCP champion, right? That's just up for Joe Kazana. Same thing with Exodus Pro. Uh, they're not trying to clear with all the other members who should be the Midwest champion. It's, that's a decision that's going to be based on Exodus Pro. But yeah, um, Shogun, the great thesis says, so basically the NWA is downsizing in terms of their content distribution. Yeah, with a 100% certainty, that is what has happened because everything now exists only on the CW app, which again, I wasn't in those meetings. I don't know how much money they're earning from the CW partnership. But I would imagine that it's enough for them to say, hey, we don't need to do pay-per-views anymore. Hey, uh, what we were making on YouTube was insignificant to what we're making now. Um, at least that's my take. I wasn't in the room. I don't know what they actually make. Um, David Valentine <laughs> with the, uh, you know, this should have been on yesterday's podcast, uh, April 1st, of course, because today is the second. Breaking news, Billy Corgan sells the NWA to Stephanie McMahon. Honestly, that did not happen. It won't happen. I don't think Stephanie wants to be in the wrestling uh, business anymore. Uh, Heeb says, realistically, more NWA dates than last year. It depends on how you look at it, Heebs. If you're including all the territories, then yes, with 100% certainty, there are more dates. If you're looking just from the Lightning One produced power and those, you know, the just Billy Corgan's NWA, I guess. Uh, I would say it's less. I would say it's less. Uh, you know, they did 10 dates in Australia. They did a date in Mexico City. And do, technically, they did two dates on, on one day because they did two separate uh, uh, shows uh, during that World as a Vampire. And then, of course, they did, um, you know, a lot of partnership shows, again, like Boca Raton. And they did a couple other shows uh, the HB Cares show, plus their TV tapings and the pay-per-views. If you really look at it, the pay-per-views are now, instead of being two nights or one night, their TV taping schedule is like once a month. So we're getting like a signature live event, uh, a TV taping, a signature live event, a TV taping, or two TV tapings. Um, I don't think it's the same. Mega says that the CW deal is only for a year. Man, if they only last one year on the CW, that's ultimately one of those worst deals I could imagine. Unless, unless CD, CW is paying for everything, right? Because if you go and look at the YouTube numbers now, I I'm not going to do that right now. I just that would take too much energy. But uh, they're they're not producing enough content to to for people to watch on YouTube anymore. It's 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 almost pointless to have a YouTube channel. They're not utilizing it in a way that features pro wrestling. I believe that the uh, the uh, this is the NWA podcast still airs on there. I know they put clips and stuff from the shows, but ultimately they don't have like a program to anchor their YouTube channel. So it's kind of like I don't know. 
it, it doesn't seem like a smart idea to me. Apparently, the pay-per-view model didn't sell well. Got to promote where the money is. And apparently, LiveGate and CW ads is the money. Yeah, absolutely. Heaps, and I, I hope you understand me. I'm not telling anybody that they made the wrong decision. I think in order for the NWA to compete, it's got to make money. And I know as a, as a content creator on YouTube, I do earn uh, money for every time somebody watches my show. Now, uh, you know, the, the NWA has over 100,000 subscribers and they get like, uh, you know, close to 20,000 views per episode of Power, or maybe even more. And sometimes at one point, like they were doing really big numbers with YouTube. I don't know what that translates. I don't know how much they're making. I know I make about 20 bucks a month. So let's say their numbers are 10 times what I'm doing. $200? Let's say that their their content is earning 100 times what I'm doing. $2,000? Is that enough to sustain a wrestling model? I don't think so. It would have to be like 1,000 times more than what I'm doing. And I don't think they are a 1,000 times more than what I'm doing. And even still... That's uh, what twenty thousand dollars a month. That might, you know, what twenty thousand a month might cover uh, an hour of TV taping. Just realistically, right? Uh, you know, we we heard, you know, we heard the pay per view numbers were low, and that's understandable. You're right. Why why continue to serve a market that's not being doesn't need to be served? I still feel like by dedicating all your resources to CW, you're at the mercy of CW. Now, if you're making money, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It still exists. You're still creating content. You're still getting paid for creating content. You're still giving people a place to work. There's still value in that. But if they are not making good money with CW, then I kind of feel like it was a bad deal. Um, let's see. Willie says CCW should be affiliated with the NWA. I don't think CCW needs the NWA. I think it's, I think like Ohio Valley, it might make sense to play nice with one another and allow champions to be, you know, on each other's programming, like how EC3, the overman is on Ohio Valley. But I don't see a benefit for CCW to become exclusively a part of the NWA. Uh, they run more than the NWA. They have, uh, you know, the frequency with what they run in Florida, Tennessee. I mean, they, they probably have as much ground as the NWA does, to be quite honest. Maybe hire someone who edits a show to highlight those NWA promotions into one for YouTube. See, that would be a perfect idea, Lamb. And and I, But I don't know if they're even allowed to do that. I'm going to move this guy before I knock it off. I don't even know if they're allowed to... to create any additional content exclusively for their YouTube channel. Even if it was a territory centric show, even if they got Joe Pedicino and had him talk about the NWA weekly, I don't think that they can do that. Uh, again, I don't know the contracts. I wasn't in the room because if they could, why didn't, why wouldn't they, you know, if, if power is, <laughs> if power is power and that's exclusive to the CW, why not a USA? I don't know. It's probably been 10 dates this year so far between the territories and the NWA versus just, uh, yeah, it, yeah, yes. They have a lot of dates between the territories and I'm again, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Um, I feel like they were just more productive last year as, as the entity that is the lightning one era NWA, not the territories. But yeah, if you include the territories, I think you're right. I think it's, it is a lot more active. Uh, again, the territories kind of seem to run autonomously with the NWA where they're doing their own thing. And the NWA isn't really benefiting from Joe Kazana promotions on YouTube and vice versa, except for it just has that name, the NWA, more exposure out there, more eyeballs on NWA talent. And of course, I think where the real value is, is the pipeline from Exodus Pro, the pipeline from NWA Chicago, and the pipeline from Joe Kazana Promotions, that the NWA could see some of the up-and-comers while they're still up-and-coming. Um, you know, the slime balls, uh, 
Well, I mean, even going back to the relationship with Crossfire Pro Wrestling in the NWA, it, it kind of feels like that gave the NWA, you know, access to the uh, the Henrys, right? Um, Kenzie and Kylie Page, uh, you know, they, they were discovered at Crossfire, you know, uh, also working with Dr. Tom Pritchard, who, again, was part of the this whole uh, expansion into the territory system. So I feel like this was uh, kind of in the works and we're seeing the fruits of that labor now. You know, we just we've we're going to see the Stu crews at the next TV tapings. We've seen Carson Drake, who we've seen from Exodus Pro with the slime balls, who Exodus Pro. Uh, we're seeing talent kind of being discovered. Now, some of them are going to be really, really good. Some of them aren't. You know, Silas Mason, he was discovered by way of Joe Kazana Promotions. Now, a lot of us are hoping he becomes the next world's heavyweight champion. It's interesting. Just playing devil's advocate, I've been away for weeks. Yeah, it's all good, Heaps. That's I love the discussion. That's what this whole show is about. Lamb says the NWA should get a sponsor like UWN with buckets for rent. Oh, don't remind me, Lamb. Don't remind me. Don't remind me. Pam's in the house. Polka dot Pam. I haven't seen Pam in a while. Pam, are you going to Philly? Pam, are you going to Forney, Texas? If you do, I'm going to come and give you a hug because I'll be in both locations. DK, DKM and myself will be in Forney, Texas. My my hotel isn't booked yet, but my flight is, so I'll definitely be there. And in Philly, my hotel is booked, but not my flight. And I don't have a ticket yet, so I have to get on the ball for that. But let's talk about tonight's episode of Power or This Morning. If, if you already watched it, then this isn't uh, anything new to you. <laughs> Will Cam smile? No. Now you want to hear something really messed up? I went to Philadelphia. I went to Glassboro by way of Philadelphia to hang out with Jaden at one of the events that he was participating at for Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators. I went to Louisiana, and DCAM met me there for Hard Times 2022. Uh, now I'm going to Texas in DK's backyard, 30 away, 35 minutes away from his home to go watch the NWA. And not one of those guys have come to California to watch wrestling with me. Hell, Pam's been to California to watch wrestling more than these guys have. And I, I wasn't able to meet Pam out there. Pam says, I'm not going to Texas, but might be in Philly. Cool. I well, if I see you, I will be happy to see you. Um, of course, you're you're a cool person, Pam. I like talking to you. Let's be real. Pam's going to Australia to watch Masters. Of the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you know, and that's all right. Side side piece here. Before the Crockett Cup last year, they did that three one two event in Chicago. Before they went to Australia, and Chris Adonis, who had multiple multiple times, has defended, wrestled in. Australia has won titles in Australia was in a match with freaking Tyrus and they could have put the belt on Adonis. Adonis could have went to Australia, defended that title and been a known commodity for the Australian fans who not only know him from his time in the WWE, but also working individual independence in Australia. It would have been a really feel good moment for the NWA. It would have been a feel good moment for Chris Adonis and then he could have come back and he could have been the one to lose the title to EC3. Or he could have dropped it back to Tyrus and, and still done everything exactly the same. And Adonis would have been held in higher regard. And the storyline would have made more sense, but they didn't. It was huge. Um, David Valentine says, what is taking the NWA so long to sign WOW and Mission Pro as territories? At least I think you mean Mission Pro. And Valent, Dave, I got to tell you, man, there is no incentive for WOW Women of Wrestling to work with the NWA. And it's not, I'm not trying to belittle either group here. Mission Pro, a little bit different story, but WOW? WOW is owned by Jeannie Buss, the, the same person who owns the majority of the Los Angeles Lakers. There's no reason for WOW to do anything with the NWA. Uh, there, there's not, their reach is probably, let me say that differently. WOW has a greater reach right now into your television and televisions all across this country than the NWA does. NWA is on the CW app. 
WoW is on TV, it's on the internet, it's on YouTube, it's on the CW app, it's everywhere. Maybe it's not on CW now, but it's still on the CW TV stations. It is, it's heavily featured. Uh, even in my market, it's not on a CW channel, it's on a local independent, but it is everywhere. Whereas the NWA is exclusive to CW. Where's the incentive for WoW to work with the NWA? I don't see one. Now, Mission Pro is a different story. In fact, Mission Pro is one of these promotions that's it feels like they have a pipeline directly to the NWA. We used to think that that was because of Thunder Rosa, right? Thunder Rosa and her, a lot of the gals that she was working with at Mission Pro, we would see end up in the NWA. Of course, uh, at one point, there was a Genocide. Uh, the Renegade Twins, former NWA Women Tag Team Champions. Uh, we also saw the likes of um, Lady Frost, who had worked a Mission Pro event. Uh, B- B- uh, Sky Blue, who had also worked for Mission Pro. Uh, but all of those talents had have moved on. None of them are still even in the NWA at this point. Uh, but we do have the the uh, King Bees, who are the Mission Pro Tag Team Champions and the NWA World Tag Team Champions. And La Princesa, Tiffany Nieves, who's still the Mission Pro Women's Champion and, uh, you know, a perennial threat to the Burke and Kenzie Page. So, yeah, I could see that. I could see a relationship forming there. But, again, it's an all-women's promotion, so that's kind of a little bit different for the NWA. But, you know, again, Jeremy says, DKM will be taking requests while yelling at the clouds. Exactly. Um, Pam's not going to Australia. I don't blame you, Pam. I want to go. Seems like my next international trip might be in Caraco for my birthday in November, which I'm looking forward to. I don't think they do wrestling in Caraco, but I will report back if they do. Putting the title on a talent who works internationally (laughs) doesn't work for me, brother. (laughs) Oh, Lamb. I love Lamb. Lamb's my guy. I am a Lamb some guy. I got the shirt somewhere. What happened to the Renegade Twins, by the way? The Twins, I, I I, I don't think they were ever under NWA contract. I think they came in and served their purpose. Uh, they they had opportunity to start working with AEW and Ring of Honor, specifically Ring of Honor. And I think that's where their energy is. I don't know if they're signed to Ring of Honor. I don't know if they're exclusive to Ring of Honor. I just know that they're not wrestling in the NWA at this point. Noob says, let's hope the NWA uh, to have more focus on building up the younger female talent this summer than focusing on Natalia Barkova. I know I'm a fan of hers, uh, but focus on Tiffany Nieves, Ruthie J, and Taylor Rising. I think, again, I'm not booking the NWA, but Taylor Rising and Natalia Markova should have been pushed to win those tag titles. And I don't have any beef with uh, the King Bees. They are a good tag team. Uh, they have a good, uh, a good look together, and they work very well as a team. But the NWA is short on tag teams. You know, it was again, getting specifically to the women's division, you know, it was the Hex. It was the Hex and then Pretty in Power. And then the Hex left after they lost the title, so it was Pretty in Power. And then they brought in the Renegade Twins just to be there for them to lose the titles and then to regain them, right? Pretty in Power has the belts again. Then the Renegade Twins are gone. And then they put Misa and Maddie Kate together. Maddie Kate. Maddie and Misa came together as M95, which was be- ended up becoming a really good tag team. And that was a very good pairing for the NWA. And of course, Maddie had the opportunity to go get signed and get a big payday to go work with the NXT and the WWE. So she did it. Um, they need to find somebody that they can partner with Misa Kate again, or uh, take, you know, Taylor Rising and Markova and put them in a tag team and, and maybe even find one more tag team, whether it be from Exodus Pro, whether it be from NWA Chicago, or even, you know, Joe Kazana Promotions and get another women's tag team involved in the NWA. Heck, even going as far as Coastal Championship Wrestling, Mission Pro, find some more female talents to put that tag team division. I mean, heck, they had Ray Lynn and uh, and Heather Monroe come in for one that one-off they should have brought them in on a more permanent basis. Uh, and, and I think you could have had a very good tag team division. So let's talk a little bit about tonight's episode of Power. Excuse me real quick. Dubby. 
Uh, I do want to talk about, uh, you know, this is, I think this, well, it's now confirmed. This episode is the finale of these TV tapings. Of course, next week will be Hard Times signature live event. And what we get here is a fallout of uh, the Southern Six's Silas Mason as he surrendered the national title, which I absolutely hate. This has become a trope for the NWA that you have to sacrifice a title in order to challenge for another title. Basically, I don't feel that the belt loses any meaning, but like uh, it is the, 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 the standard and practice for most wrestling promotions is when a lesser champion, say the intercontinental champion uh, or the U S champion wins a world title. They either get to briefly unify that title or they split them and the, the, uh, the lesser title becomes vacant. That's how they should do it. If the ultimate warrior loses to Hulk Hogan, he should still retain his intercontinental championship and Hogan should still be the world wrestling federation champion. Uh, there's no need, reason for the warrior to sacrifice his championship just to challenge. That was a rule that I have not seen anywhere but the NWA. Now, initially, that was connected just to the television title, which, again, made sense because it had that lucky seven. You win seven matches, you surrender the title for your shot at the world title. All of that makes sense. But in years, the bygone years of the NWA, when it split from WCW, um, the North American champion was always referred to as the number one contender, which would be our national champion today. But it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't like you had to surrender that title to challenge for the world title. That is strictly a Billy Corgan NWA power uh, innovation. I don't love it. I don't think it's, I don't think it makes sense wrestling wise, but that is what it is. And since then we now have uh, Silas Mason surrendering the, surrendering the national title. It's, being, um, I, I believe it's going to be filled with a four-way match, um, which again, don't like that either. <laughs> don't like that. But they have done qualifying matches over the last few weeks. We know that uh, Burchill, who just beat Magic Jake, has qualified. Uh, Blake Troop will be in that tournament or that four-way match, and Zion uh, will also be in that match. Zion getting the win over AJ Kazana last week. Um, the last competitor to join this, uh, the join the trio, will be the winner of the match between the former television champion Tom Latimer and Carson Drake, a newcomer from Exodus Pro. I can't say newcomer because he's had a few appearances on Power, but obviously there is a odds-on favorite for Tom Latimer in this one, as he is a multi-champion in the NWA, former tag team champion with Royce Isaacs, former television champion. And he did challenge for the 10 pounds of gold at EC3 uh, at Sal Wen. And so this will be uh, his opportunity to kind of get himself back into that title picture. Um, also on tonight's episode of Power, we see the return of Mo Jabari. He takes on Joe Alonzo. Now, Jabari, the last time we saw him on NWA programming, he had challenged Colby Carino for the Junior Heavyweight Championship unsuccessfully. Um, just fell short of capturing that crown. Alonzo's last appearance on power was in a losing effort to Blake bulletproof troop. So again, both of these men are uh, in need of a victory here uh, to hopefully secure an additional junior heavyweight title shot, perhaps at hard times. Uh, also in action, we'll see the team of the kids taking on the slime balls. Now the kids are an interesting tag team because they're not from Exodus pro. They are not from Joe Kazana promotions. They were kind of discovered uh, during the trip in Florida. And the, the kids are Alexander Lev, who is a graduate of the Nightmare Factory, and his partner, Jackson Drake. Um, they've, they've made a, uh, a handful of appearances for Crossfire Wrestling. Again, that's the promotion ran by the Henry sisters, Kenzie and Kylie Page. Uh, the duo has had two disappointing losses on power, first losing to Adrian Thompson and Hunter James, and then later losing to Nima Gore and the Cheese as part of the F, uh, the uh, the NWA and CCW event. The slime balls again were discovered at Exodus Pro, but they've been quietly racking up victories in the Northeast wrestling and CZW, having title matches in Combat Zone Wrestling and winning the New York Wrestling Connection tag team titles. 
Uh, to their credit, the Slime Balls were the Christmas Wish Battle Royal winners, but really haven't done a whole lot in the NWA. So this will also be a very much a statement match when you have, uh, you know, Blunt Force Trauma as your World Tag Team Champions, and you have the Immortals, uh, Kratos and Odinson as your USA Tag Team Champions. Uh, this would be a good opportunity to start building some challengers uh, for the for those US Tag Titles. Uh, lastly, uh, on tonight's episode of Power, I can only imagine this is the main event because of the star power, but I'm so disappointed because, again, I'm not a huge fan of this really mixed uh, dynamic in the ring, but you have Murnox teaming with Eric Smalls to take on the new Spectaculars 2.0, which is Rolando Freeman, Rush Freeman, and Slade. We haven't seen a lot of Rush Freeman. Uh, in fact, we haven't seen any Rush Freeman in a while. Slade and, and uh, Rolando have been getting a lot of camera time, but we haven't seen Rush. So he's been absent from a lot of the TV tapings. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, and I'm not sure what we're going to get out of the six-man tag. Uh, hopefully it'll be interesting. Hopefully it'll be fun. But again, I'm not holding my breath for Rolando and Eric Smalls. I just don't feel like that's something I'm really, uh, really up, uh, worked up for. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Matthew Underwood says... Bring in the workhorsemen for the Crockett Cup. Hey, I mean, look, I think they just got released, right? So if they're free and clear, why not? Uh, you know, the horsemen, the workhorsemen, uh, you know, they've been seen in a lot in AEW and Ring of Honor, but um, there's a lot of potential there. TNA had option C where the X Division champion can cash in his title for a world title shot at Destination X. It was like to promote the heavyweight division. And that's okay, too, if it was like one time a year that you can do this, right? Like if it was at hard times, like you could cash in, that would be fine. I wouldn't have a problem with that. In fact, then that would make the chase to hard times or whatever signature live event it's going to be even more um, interesting because if you're the – if you're the national champion, if you're Silas Mason and you're going into hard times, uh, you know, the pay-per-view leading up to hard times or the, excuse me, the signature live event leading up to that or after that uh, would be very um, interesting. So you could, you know, Silas Mason heading into the, the Crockett Cup, you know, knowing that he wants to challenge for the world title, you know, he has to keep that title through hard times in order to do it. And there's more pressure on him to retain that title at hard times because he has this opportunity. That's a hypothetical, just Jay thinking outside of the box, but yeah. <clears throat> so Latimer for the national championship before he challenges EC3 again and wins. If Latimer, I think is horribly underutilized by the NWA. And that's, and that's saying a lot. He was a TV champion. He had seven victories as the TV champion. He earned his world title shot. He's a former tag team champion. I still think that, there should be a greater focus on Tom Latimer. The dude is a very good professional wrestler. And I don't know what reason Billy Corgan hasn't pushed that guy to the moon, but EC3 has been a very competent champ, but I'm feeling very bored in this title. His, his run as world champion has become very lackluster. Um, again, I don't know if that's because the byproduct of not having the pay-per-views or what, but it just seems kind of dull. They haven't, you know, the biggest name that they brought in for him to challenge was Matt Cardona. And even that kind of was a mockery, uh, you know, the hardcore death match, you know, it was, was absolutely zero build to it. I don't know. Matthew Underwood says QT Marshall is one and oh in the NWA. Well, hey, okay, I got it. Noob said, I saw that video on social media where Chris Silvio called out Natalia Markova following up what happened on power a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I the NWA is not afraid to do some intergender wrestling. Chris Silvio is a very competent pro wrestler. Um, I don't see the benefit to anyone for that matchup, but okay. You know, it gives them both something to do, I guess. Heap says, I think Rush is gone. Uh, you know, there was a lot of controversy surrounding Rush Freeman and, uh, and, and his girlfriend or now ex-girlfriend and you know, you never really know what to believe. Uh, you know, you never want to victim blame or victim shame or anything like that. I, I don't want to get into details because I don't know them. I always hope and, you know, my hope is that first and foremost, my hope is people just treat people with freaking respect, right? Let's just treat people the way that we want to be treated. I always tell people, tr I treat people like I want people to treat my kids. That's my, that's what I do. 
I, I try to show love and kindness to everybody, not just, you know, not just people I like, but even people I don't like. Right. And uh, I don't know what happened there and I don't really want to know what happened there. I just hope that uh, everyone is safe and good and um, moving on from where they were. Uh, Billy, Billy might not like British people from his past. Well, I mean, Burchill had an opportunity to challenge for the national title uh, he is in this uh, title tournament along with uh, uh, you know, Tom Latimer. Well, I, I mean, if Latimer wins tonight, of course, uh, that would be two British people in there. And, of course, with Nick Aldis, yeah, I get what you're saying, Lamb, but uh, I don't know. Polka Dot Pam says EC3 is super boring. Uh, he just – I don't – I think the biggest problem for, for EC3 is they have not made a clearly defined person to chase for that title. Nick Aldis benefited from his initial feud with Tim Storm. It was built up so uh, profoundly on the 10 pounds of gold series where you had everybody loved Tim Storm and he was being chased by this guy from Impact who we didn't, didn't Magnus. We didn't know anything about Magnus. We knew he was a former Impact champion and they built it up so well and it worked. And then when Aldis was champion, you know, he had, you know, for him, it was like he really didn't get defined in the NWA until um, Trevor Murdoch emerged as like that number one contender, right? That's when things started getting good with Nick Aldis and, and Murdoch. There was a lot of convoluted BS stuff. And of course, you got to take into consideration the, the angles he had with Marty Skrull as well. But really, Trevor Murdoch was the right guy to challenge Nick Aldis for that 10 pounds of gold. But they haven't found that recipe since. When Trevor Murdoch won the title, you could say that Tyrus was the guy, but like even then, no one wanted Tyrus to be that guy then. And and uh, the Pope could have been that guy, but they never built that up either. And, and, and then you look at like, well, Matt, they brought in Matt Cardona. Matt Cardona was, I still think that was a mistake. Uh, they did not bring him in and, and build him up to be a challenger. They they hot shot of the title to him and and got burned by it, right? When have they had a good person to chase? Like, who was chasing Tyrus for the 10 pounds of gold? I mean, you could say EC3, but not really. There was no real chase there. There was no long storyline that built that up. And since EC3's won the title... Who's his opponent? Who's his rival? <clears throat> Flair had Steamboat, you know? Uh, Flair had Harley Race. Flair had Dusty Rhodes. Flair had Sting. They always had a good person to be in the ring and share those storylines with Flair. Even Luger, right? I mean, there, there was this great storyline. In years past, champions had rivals. Adam Pierce, Colt Cabana. That rivalry went their entire tenure in the NWA. You know, what? who is the rivalry for, for right now? Who is the rivalry for uh, EC3? He doesn't have one. And and there's therein lies the problem. What story are you trying to tell? And there's, no, there's nobody there to have that story with him. Markova is great in the ring and she's a good talker, but I think her talent should fit in a bigger stage, whether it's WWE or AEW. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, if the opportunity arises, Markova should take it, of course. Of course. <laughs> NWA champion versus the booking. You're right. Lamb says Murdoch's first title reign was still very forgettable because they had made him look so bad. Well, that's, again, that's the byproduct of bad booking, though. That's not that's not uh, Trevor's fault. Uh, Trevor did the best he could with that, and of course they they screwed the pooch. They could have had a they should have had they could have had a long build between Matt Cardona and and Trevor Murdoch. You know, Cardona's a loudmouth, obnoxious jerk, and and you know Trevor is trying to do right by Harley and by right by the NWA and they could have built to that storyline. Instead, they pulled the trigger way too fast 
it didn't make any sense. And I get, you know, later you hear how Aldis was unhappy with the direction of the NWA. Hell, he probably knew that Tyrus was going to get the 10 pounds of gold before he walked out the door too. Fiona says, my friend has a match with EC3 this weekend for the belt, and I'm excited for him. That's awesome. Um, don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. Don't get me wrong. I think EC3 is definitely a great ambassador for the NWA. I think EC3 has the tools to be a good wrestler for the NWA. I just feel like the, the big problem for EC3 is they just haven't given him a proper storyline. You know, he, he could be the conquering Roman emperor all he wants, right? He could be Napoleon Bonaparte incarnate. But unless he gets a decent rival... These matches are meaningless. He takes the title to, to, to California. There was no buzz about that. I live in California. Nobody was talking about that match. Nobody cared. He took the title to Utah. Great. Nobody cared. He's got he's had some matches with some higher profile guys, but he really needs to be in a position and, and, and have a rival that's really going to gain interest. The, the blueprint was written by Adam Pierce and Colt Cabana, and and whether you like those guys or not, they had developed a perfectly good way to build up a storyline to make people care. The seven levels of hate. Hell, Billy, go watch the damn video. It's still available on on YouTube or something. There's the blueprint is there. It's easy. You find a rival, somebody that makes sense. Who could be EC3's rival right now? I don't think it's anybody on the roster. We got Silas Mason. Fans love Silas Mason, but where's the build to this? Where are the promos? Where I mean, we've heard the promo. I'm surrendering the belt. Cool. But go in on EC3. How about before you surrender the belt, you go beat the shit out of him after Matt Cardona beats the shit out of him. Build it up. Give me something to get excited about. I haven't felt that with EC3. I don't, I don't, I'm not excited for an EC3 match. I don't feel like I don't feel like EC3 is going to lose that title at hard times. I don't feel like he's going to lose that title at Crockett Cup. And I think that's a big freaking problem. When Adam Pierce was world champion and I'm not trying to sing that dude's praise every minute, but when that guy was champion, he went in to go face the maestro of wrestling and I know it's the maestro of wrestling, but I was worried he's going to lose that title. When he went to Virginia to wrestle Damian Wayne, I thought he was going to lose the title. When he wrestled Colt Cabana in L.A. In, at the Regent Showcase Theater and Colt Cabana wins a title, we didn't know that he was going to win that title. We were all blown away. That's that's good storytelling. We haven't seen that. We haven't seen that, and I think that's a detriment to not only the current NWA product, but also EC3. How are you supposed to be memorable if we don't get any memorable moments? How can you be a legend if you don't do anything legendary? Right? Pam says she agrees. She's gotten bored. Uh, yeah, EC3 was in California. It was at SPW, which is in Northern California. That's actually Poyo's uh, stomping grounds. And um, I don't think Poyo was there. But um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, a big deal. Like nobody was talking about that. So I am still very much an NWA fan. I'm, a, I'm wearing my shirt. I still want to see the NWA succeed. I've spent the last 20 plus years of my life talking about the NWA, writing about the NWA, sharing my experiences with you guys. And I got to tell you that I'm not overly impressed with EC3 as world champion. I think he's a great wrestler. I think he has a shit ton of potential. And I don't mean this in a negative way at all. But God damn it, give him a rival. Give him somebody that will get the best of him. And if it's Tom Latimer, great. Why are we dicking around with the national title with Tom? Why isn't he just getting a shot at EC3? Because damn it, he's a good wrestler. I'm 10 minutes over our normal time, guys. I do thank you for being patient and letting me rant here today. I love talking about the NWA with you guys. This is what makes my Tuesday so much fun. If you haven't watched Power yet, go into the video description of this. 
Click on the link to get you to Discord. We're going to watch Discord uh, and the CW right now. Join me over there. But I'm going to say toodaloo and goodbye. And, uh, oh, real quick, real quick, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we are uh, supporting my friend, uh, my friend Brandon uh, Noel of uh, Destiny Comics, who is doing a photo book uh, on WCW and its history. It's called uh, Blood and Paint. And he has pictures like this and like this and like this and also like this uh, on Kickstarter. If you guys are so inclined to help him uh, support that project where he is trying to get uh, raise money to produce this book, um, they have a lot of rewards based on donations um, for as little as $10 and as much as like $700 with a lot of cool things. Make sure uh, if you haven't done so now, you can check out the video we did yesterday uh, with with Brandon uh, on our uh, YouTube channel. It's also on TikTok, not TikTok, excuse me, on the X and on uh, uh, Twitch. And then tomorrow, guys, there's not going to be a uh, regular episode of the other Alliance guys. Both uh, Jeremy has to uh, is not available and our pal Dave Scooby's a little under the weather. So we're going to. I'm looking for some re content replacement. Uh, it might be some previously seen interviews, but we're going to try to put something up tomorrow at 3.35 just to give you guys something to watch because I know you guys enjoy this community and we enjoy you guys. Uh, but again, follow me over to Discord. We're going to watch some CW. We're going to watch uh, NWA Power. And until next time, as I always tell you, I will see you, especially if you're heading to Texas, at the... Matches. Thanks for checking out the pre-party, a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com. You should hit that subscribe button and join our community. I also want to remind you that we recap NWA Power every Thursday at 8 p.m. in the live stream. We try to stay social, so find us at the Alliance blog. And until next time, we...